Hello everybody, welcome back to the Reset Info channel. In today's video, I'll show you the first things to do after setup on your POCO F8 Ultra. So first, what you guys want to do is connect to the Wi-Fi. So open up these settings. Now go over to Wi-Fi and here you guys will choose the network that is yours. So this is my network. And all you guys need to do is enter the password and click connect. So I'll quickly do that off camera and I'll get back to you. Now click on connect. And as you guys can see, we do have Wi-Fi now. So what we want to do next is check for any software updates. So this is the most important thing to do after the setup to make sure that our phone is starting up with the latest version. So go to about phone at the top and click on HyperOS right here. Now it will automatically check if you have any updates available. And as you guys can see, I don't because we had received the notifications here about the updates not being available. So now what we can do is add a Google account and update our apps via the Play Store. So we're gonna go over to Play Store and here sign into our account. So here you enter the email. And next we enter the password. So I'll quickly do that off camera. So after you enter the password, as you guys can see, you'll see the backup. So make sure to enable backup of your photos and videos and of course the other device data like your contacts, your messages and everything else. So turn on the backup. Now click on get started and here you guys can choose either password or biometrics. But since we did not set up the biometrics yet, I'll go over and use the password. After entering the password, click done and now your settings will be saved. So to update our apps, let's click on our avatar here. Let's go over to my apps and games and here you will have updates available. So we have 39 apps that we can update and all we have to do is click update all here and let it update in the background. So we do not need to be in the Play Store. Now we're gonna go over and set up our screen locks. So let's go over to the settings. Here you need to scroll a bit down until you see fingerprints, face data and screen lock. Here we're gonna start off with the screen lock. You guys can choose a pattern, pin, password. I always choose a pin. And we have a notification that we need to remember our password because otherwise we will have to reset our phone to set up a new one. Now you can enter 4216 digits. I'll always go with 123456, but this is the password that I use on this device. So make sure you do not use the same password as me because it's very unsafe. You guys can choose any other password like that for an example. And we have this type of password that nobody will guess but everybody guesses 123456 first try. So do not set up the same password as me. Now let's just click on OK and now we're gonna add a fingerprint. So let's click on record, click on don't show again and click on got it. And we need to move and rotate our finger slowly. So this actually works faster than tapping on most phones. Now our fingerprint is done and it's right here. What we can do next is enable the face unlock. So we're gonna enter our pin that we have created, click next and here click start. Now, as you guys can see, we get a notification that face unlock is definitely less secure than our other screen lock methods now. But this is how you guys can easily set it up. We need to keep our face inside of the frame. So I'll quickly do that. The process is taking less than 10 seconds. So I'll see you guys in a second. Now we have successfully added our face. We can use it to unlock the phone now. As you guys can see, it went through. Now let's try and use our fingerprint and see if that works. So now it's not detecting my face. Let's click here and of course it does work too. 
So now we can test our password and see if that works as well. And as you guys can see, we set up everything. We can also enable unlock with Bluetooth device, but as you guys can see, this feature works with selected wearable devices made by Xiaomi. So if you do not have one of these, then you won't be able to use it. And since I don't have it, then I won't be able to. Now, what we can do next is go over to Play Store and check if we have Google Wallet installed. So go to search for apps and games and type in Google, click on Google Pay. Now let's click on Google Pay and we need to check for Google Wallet. It's not pre-installed or you did not update it. So now install it quickly and open it. Click open to open it. And now it will choose an account to use with Google Wallet automatically. Click on view wallet here and now allow it to send you notifications. Here we have the card that we can add like setup card, but you need to have the card with you physically to either scan it or to enter the information on it. So here we have it. We can check of course for any other passes like the payback, driver rewards, loyalty programs, clubs, and practically anything else that is here. Also, if you do not have the same loyalty programs like me, then it's normal because it's region dependent. So now click on plus here. You guys can add a payment card, transit pass, loyalty, and gift card. Of course, you can also add a photo of a, as you guys can see, the barcode or a QR code. Now click on payment card if you want to add a new card. Click on new credit or debit card or use the card that is already saved on your account. So it is already saved in the wallet. But since I do not have it physically, I won't be able to add it because I do not remember the numbers. So let's click new credit or debit card and it will automatically enable the option to scan it. We can also, of course, click enter details manually like our card numbers. So for an example, I'll enter the starting one for visa and even though it says invalid card number then we can just enter our month and date or anything else let's quickly do that now we have the security code and here you guys will enter a three digit code click on save and then you will continue to have a card in your wallet so you'll be able to pay with your new phone and that's basically how you guys can add a card to the wallet so after that go to the settings and go to battery this is what you want to do we want to go over to the current mode and check every one of them so if your battery is lower than 20 use a battery saver if it's below 5 use a ultra battery saver and performance mode if you want a game on your phone and it's at a hundred percent so here we have the battery checkup we can turn on the dark mode to increase the time by one hour we can do a lot of more things to add the minutes remaining now we have successfully added one hour without enabling the dark mode and this is how we can do that now, what else can we do? We can go over and check the additional features. Here, you can clear cache when the device is locked. I always set it up at five minutes. And of course, make sure to enable cold endurance modes since it's winter now, then you will extend your battery life even in cold environments. So this is what you guys want to do. Now you guys can also schedule your power on and power off so here you guys can schedule your power on at 7 a.m and schedule power off at 11 30 and what will happen in those seven and a half hours your phone will be completely turned off so you can save battery that way it's very good now here you have the wireless charging firmware updates so you can check for firmware updates and install new versions automatically once they're released so this is how you guys can check it up. It says up to date right here. So you do not need to worry about it. Now for the battery protection, as you guys can see, we need to calibrate the battery health info. 
so we need to fully charge and discharge our device three to five times to improve the accuracy of the battery health stats. So here you guys can charge it fully to 100%. You guys can protect your battery life and it will charge only when it's scheduled up to 100%, but normally it will reach 80% only. Now, intelligent charging will stop charging your battery whenever it reaches 80% in some situations but I recommend using the battery protection or charge fully option even though battery protection is definitely the best. Now for the charging options make sure to change the wired mode to top speed and what will happen your phone will have fast charging enabled but you see that device might heat up. Here you have wireless charging mode you guys can set it up to standard or silent to slow up your charging and reduce the noise. Now you guys can enable the reverse wireless charging and to exactly use it, all you guys have to do is take your phone for an example and I'll put my phone as an example here. Just go over here, turn off your phone and it should charge as you guys can see it's charging off of the poco so this is how the wireless charging works and now what you guys can do is just turn it off because that's something you probably won't need but maybe if you charge your headphones now here we have the battery checkup this is what we have checked and here we have the charging options. Now, let's mention the charging limit here for the reverse wireless charging. Basically, it will turn off the wireless charging automatically. So whenever your device goes lower than 40, 30 or 20%. So you can enable it and charge up somebody's phone. As you guys can see, we have 74%. So it will charge only to 20% on our phone. So we can waste 54% of our battery. So that's what you guys can do as a first thing to do after the setup. Thank you guys for watching this video. If it was helpful, consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.